Hey everybody, I'm Ashley Graham and you are here on my podcast, Pretty Big Deal. We're going to be tackling some of my favorite topics, beauty, business, owning who you are. You guys are a major part of this conversation and we want to hear from you on Instagram and Twitter at Pretty Big Deal. Also, download that Anchor app. You know where to go at your app store. You can leave me a little voicemail and I'm going to listen to it because after this, we're going to have our after show and we can talk and we can sing and we can do whatever the heck you want to do or whatever I want to do because it's my show pretty big deal okay today we've got YouTube legend groundbreaking comedian and UNICEF ambassador she is freaking amazing Lily Singh thanks for having me oh my gosh this is so much don't fun don't you love this part when we have to be like we haven't been sitting here for 20 minutes so it's like <laughs> thank, wow thank you so much for having me to the set I just saw right now <laughs> And also when you you can't actually be normal about like, we haven't met before, but right, we definitely right, right. have met before. 100%. We actually first met, and I know you remember this, but mm. hello people, we're going to let you know. We this were on is this, about us. Yes, this <laughs> is about us and you knowing about us um, on the set with Carly Kloss yes, for Movie Yes, of course, night. I remember. Uh, how did you and Carly meet? I first met Carly uh, in Italy at Google Camp. Cool. And I, I wasn't wasn't invited. Being, yeah, no, no, yeah, That's no. okay. That's okay, I was never invited again. Um... <laughs> But I remember being so intimidated by her right off the bat because she's she's really tall. Yes, and she's like stunningly beautiful. You might think you know how beautiful Carly is, but no, you don't. In you person, don't know. it's another level. You don't know. So I was like, oh my god, I peed a little. And she's like, really oh nice. God. You peed that's, a little. I peed a little. Uh -huh. And then that's what really caught me off guard. She's so nice and smart. Not that I thought she wouldn't be. Yeah. But she was just. But you know, that us models. <laughs> I mean, I don't want to say it, but just said it. But like, <laughs> no, but she's like so nice and she was so warm and welcoming to me we instantly became friends Aww. and i just adore her that's how i felt about it. actually mm -hmm. i stalked carly the first time oh, i nice, met her nice. yeah i really i wasn't famous and she was at a, a runway show and i kind of stood behind her until mm -hmm. she turned around and i was like can i have a photo with you and she says sure <laughs> and the next thing you know we're and friends. then you got on stilts yeah. and then and you then took then a picture like, <laughs> yes and i was like can you come down please well speaking <laughs> of you saying by the way you're not famous i have to tell a small little story and tell then i'll me. shut up okay tell me so i meet like a lot of cool people i'd say I'm pretty important. I mean, a lot of you are. People. I'm kidding. But my friends have never really cared about anything. I think a few days ago, you literally you commented on my Instagram picture. I think, <laughs> and one of my friends messages me. Nandini, she's a doctor. I'm gonna call you. She messaged me. She's like, Ashley Efton Graham <laughs> just commented on your picture. I'm like, oh my god. I mean. You're very cool, but I've met so many people. Uh, yeah, like you yeah. were the one that she and she put it on her story. No, and she, she like, did. She did, she did the whole as if it was her. You what's her name? On her. Nandini. 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 Yeah. Nandini. What's up, what's girl? Up? Oh, that's so awesome. I was like, yes, Ashley Graham. Oh my god, get I that love coin. That. Where yeah. is she? She's in Canada. She's in Canada. Okay, in Toronto, cool. Yeah. All right. She's a doctor. She saves lives. Oh, yeah. we love doctors. Yeah. Um, okay, let's just hop into it. Let's do it. Fourteen freaking million YouTube subscribers. Pretty cool. I, I want to. I want to understand how did it start? Where did you start? Why did you start with YouTube? Yeah. Well, it was 2010. Okay. I was still living in Toronto. I was getting Toronto. You don't pronounce the T, by the way. If you want to sound like you belong. Wait, this is why you and Drake are best friends. Ex that's exactly Toronto. correct. Uh, that's exactly wait, that was the other thing that you did at the movie <laughs> movie night with Carly is you pretended that Drake was coming through the door and no Carly do you did that? that and I believed it. Oh, it was Carly. <laughs> and then I threw the right. pillow on her and you and I basically cried. Yeah. That's what that's what really formed our friendship. <laughs> yes. I feel that, that that mutual disappointment in that moment. Yes. And now we know how we, how weird each other is. Yeah, so. yeah, exactly. Okay. Um 2010, I was still living in Toronto. Went to York University getting a psych degree, which I do have a psych degree. Full on. I have a full on psych degree, which people like to convince me I use in my comedy, but. Mm. Masters? Calm down. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> calm down, mom. Stop. Don't do this to me. I mean, I uh, never went to college. It's okay. It's, I, I have views. Anyways, um, I honestly, I was sad. That's, I just, that's just the simple way, simplest way to put it. I was not doing something I enjoyed, I didn't want to do psych. I was following my sister's footsteps. Not that anything's wrong with her footsteps, but they were just not me. Yeah. Um, and I think I was just kind of bogged down by this idea of how I was told life has to go. You know, mm. I knew that I was going to go to university. I was going to get a degree. I'd have to find a job. A couple years later, I would get married, have kids. And I was like, is this really what it's going to be? Because I'm, I don't feel that's right for me. And so for a long time, I was sad. For a year, I went through a really dark period. And I discovered YouTube. 
during that time. Wait, would you call it like depression? I would call it depression. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm a little bit hesitant to call it that because I never went to a doctor and you was never, never cl- prescribed something. I know in my heart I was depressed, yeah. but I, I don't want to take credit away from that whole process. Of course. Because um, the stigma has affected me firsthand. I didn't go to a doctor. Right. But uh, I think there are a lot of people that suffer from depression and course. may not even know it. Of course. Yeah. Definitely. Which is why I'm so vocal about it mm-hmm. now, because if I could go back in time, I would try to act without that stigma right. for sure. Right. Um, but YouTube during that time was just up and coming. And I remember one of my friends was like, oh, check out this video on this website. And I, my exact words were, what is this trash that's going to waste my time? <laughs> I don't want to watch this. And I watched a couple of videos and I was just blown away by the fact that these people were making videos in their bedrooms, just talking to a camera like they were talking to a friend. And I was like, these people are crazy. Like this is, ins- <laughs> this is an insane thing. I know you're but one I, of them. Exactly. <laughs> but I loved it. And so without much thinking, I uploaded a video. It was really effing bad. It was. I remember a, you talking about yes. this in an interview, yes. how terrible your first it was video so was. so bad. I spent like it? an hour on my eyeliner. I bought a new blazer for this video. I like tried to stand up straight and talk in this cool accent. It's cringe. It's a, it was a spoken word piece okay. about religion. Which is not up anymore, not because it was cringe, but because it just is not what I believe anymore. Oh, okay. okay. <clears throat> I mean, my second and third cringe videos are still up, so you can see them. Okay. Um, but as bad as it was, I just fell in love with this idea of like, yo, I can do what I want to do mm. creatively, mm-hmm. and no one's going to try to mold this for me. And so without thinking, you know, I made a second and third video, and it snowballed into a career I was very much so not prepared for. Do you know the moment it started to snowball and, like, what that video was? Yeah, it was definitely the trend that was, you know, stuff girls say and stuff guys say. Do you remember right. that trend that happened? I did a Punjabi mom's version. Oh. And so to no credit of myself, it was 100% the trend. My video hit a million views, and I was like, oh, my God. Because my first video hit 70. Okay. 70 views. <laughs> ah, wow. And I remember back then I still had my notifications on. Right. So I would get a notification oh, no. anytime someone oh, no. would subscribe. Oh, no, you got a million notifications? Well, I turned it off before that. Oh, but the point God. I was making is I was so unpopular that I could still have my notifications on. Do... Uh- <laughs> <laughs> do your fans write to you and say like thank you so much for making these videos like what is the back and forth with them i'm gonna start by saying i love my fans and i know a lot of people say they love their fans but i am truly obsessed with my fans Aww. they really do help me when i'm feeling super down and i mean my job is on the internet it right. can be super positive but it can mm-hmm. be super negative and so my fans are amazing and i love them so much but yeah our our engagement is pretty open whether it's twitter whether it's meet and greets that i have whether it's uh, comments under my videos I get a lot of gratitude for making videos and a lot of just people relating, mm-hmm. you know? I think mm-hmm. that's the, the key of what I do is people relating. What do your meet and greets look like? Depends where it is, <laughs> <laughs> you know? It depends if it's in Texas or India. <laughs> so, got it. So is it like, hey, we're gonna meet at this bookstore and- Yeah, like I've been on We're two- gonna do a group hug. Yeah. Oh, group hug, <laughs> dang, intense. That's, you're jumping the gun here. Um, <laughs> I've gone on two world tours. Okay. And so the first one was a variety show okay. where I rapped and I danced and I did motivational speaking and stand-up comedy and all that stuff. The second one was a book tour. So I've done meet and greets for both. Got it. And I'm not going to lie, meet and greets can be pretty exhausting. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm super grateful. Could you do them and then you fly and then you do one and, you fl- and it's like every day. Well, the book tour was especially hard because... I would meet every single person at the show. No. And some of those, yeah, some of those venues were like a thousand people. No. So I do the show, meet a thousand people, then get on the flight. Because if you meet everybody, honestly, they feel special. They feel connected to you, which they are. And also for a book sale, like your publisher helps with the book sale and they yes. want the, you know, they want everyone to come That's what to we buy did. the book and then you get to meet them. So it's an extra incentive. But I didn't have a thousand people. I had about 400 people mm-hmm. at each book. Still writing. a lot. Still a lot. <laughs> it is. But you know, you sit on the chair and then everybody wants you to stand and I'm in heels. Oh, I don't stand. I don't sit. You sit? I did because my feet started to swell because <sighs> really I'm smart. a big girl. And you know, you have but a little you, bit no, of salt. It's because you wear heels. And the heels. I mean, it's like one thing after the other. It's the price of being fabulous. Okay. I'm so glad that you started talking about um, going on a book tour because mm-hmm. Baus. Baus. It's a New York Times freaking bestseller. It is. Woo. Holy cow. Thanks. Um, I want to talk about it and I mm-hmm. want to know what does it mean to be a boss because I feel like it's got more definitions than, than what, you know, what I think it is. Right, right. Well, you know, going back to that period of time where I was super sad, the most important lesson I learned was every day I woke up and I was like, I just need to make it through the day. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't care what I do. I want to wake up. I want to go to bed. I just want to make it to my bed and make it through the day. And I didn't turn my life around until I changed my mentality to think 
don't just make it through the day kill it today uh -huh. do your best today be present today do all the things you want to do today and so being a boss is about not surviving life but conquering life it's about really being present really taking in lessons thinking critically being proactive in terms of your happiness and just really conquering life so it's it's regardless of money it's really oh, about no, no, it's no, no. it's you it's and you. everything you're bringing to the plate 100 percent. it I is like your that. energy it is your action it is the way you think it's the way you mold your mind it has nothing to do with money did you um did you hear from rick ross after you <laughs> you know i thought i would i'm not gonna lie i was like i'm gonna get sued any second but no not yet hopefully he, uh he doesn't watch this and get any ideas <laughs> could you imagine this is the thing i was like, like i was like did she get sued by rick ross or you know no? what i'm gonna say though I feel like my publishers would have had to gone through that legal process. Oh, no, they did. They yeah. did. And so I feel like Rick Ross doesn't have it copyrighted then. Then he must not. And yeah. he didn't think about it. Because Tyra. So, you snooze, you lose. Hello. Because <laughs> Tyra has Smize copyrighted. No. Yes. She's wow. making money every time we say wow. Smize. Yes, it's a real thing. So I'm surprised. How does that, that work if you copyright a word? Like, let's is call that her lawyer. Let's Actually, let's get her on the phone. <laughs> I was like, Kent, this was another drink can. moment. Okay. No, we can, but okay. maybe not on camera. Okay, um, okay so when I, I wrote... I just want to confirm that we can, though. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, because she is a mentor of mine. I, oh, that's Yeah, amazing. yeah, I love her. Um, when I wrote my book, it was like a big therapy session, mm -hmm. and I got to think about why why did I do this in life, and why was I so confident now, and I wasn't then, mm -hmm. and what was the experience for you? Very similar. I feel like writing a book is such a spiritual journey, especially it when it's of the nature of self-help, because I had to reflect literally my whole life mm -hmm. and go back to all these experiences I had and dissect the lessons from them. So when I was writing it, I was like, what? I guess I did learn all these things, but I didn't realize I learned them until I started writing about them. That's a big thing. Like you have these aha yeah, moments exactly. of like, man, I actually have come very far. And it's like, this is why I do what I do. It's because of this experience. So yeah, there were a lot of moments writing my book where I just sat and I was like, Wow, mm -hmm. Come that on was way. really important in my life. Yeah, what has been the biggest feedback from your fans? About the book? Yeah. The biggest feedback, and it makes me the happiest as well, is you can really hear my voice on the page. So I was very adamant, I wrote every word of the book. You did? You didn't every have anybody help you? Well, and, the, and the reason, and how Major. I proved this is, it's been over a year now, but when I wrote the book, every interview I would do, I told them to pick a random page and read a sentence, and I would tell them which chapter it's from. <gasps> yeah, because I wanted to prove, I was like, I have this book memorized. I wrote every single word of this book, and I know it so, so well. It's so like my impressed. baby. And so the, the thing that really strikes me the most for my fans when they say it is, you can hear my voice on the page. Because I have the same comedy, I have my same quirks, all of that is on the page. How did you map it out? Like, what, what was that process? Because I mean, shout outs to my publisher. Um, I you know, the stuff they teach you in school it's important because honestly I Maybe. did the whole breakdown. Did you start with the chapters? Because that's what yes, I did. Yes, I start I start with a chapter okay. breakdown yep. of what, what every chapter was going to be about. Mm -hmm. Then what the skeleton of the chapter was going to hamburger essay, y'all. I'm telling you <laughs> what the skeleton <laughs> yes. of the chapter was going to be. Um, I'm not gonna lie, there were some all nighters though where I was like, okay. It's going to be 10 chapters today because <laughs> writing a book is hard. Is. Yo, writing a book is so damn hard. <laughs> I don't think people understand to sit there and analyze yourself and then write in English. Like, mm -hmm. How many people know that language? <laughs> Not many. You think you do? You don't. Wait. You what don't. Does that mean? <laughs> because even I, I, I definitely also, don't. I'm a terrible reader. Oh, I'm always really? asking my team, what the hell is that word? Yeah, no, especially when you're like you're on the phone with your lawyer. You're like, oh, what are you no. saying? Oh, even when I'm on the phone with Darcel, I don't even know what she's talking about. <laughs> do you oh, record the audiobook though? Yeah, I only did the opening chapter. What did you do? What was that experience like, the opening chapter? Well, it was fun because but it was long. Okay, so and I had to keep eating apples in between because my mouth got really dry. <laughs> So they say that if you eat apples, it wettens your mouth. It, wet it wettens it, but you don't want it too wet, so you can't like keep drinking water. Is so wettens a word? It's a new word. Okay. Wetten. Can you look that up to yourself? Copyright that. <laughs> wettens and smiles. But you We're know, otherwise you. you hear that. No, I feel you. Here's the thing about the audiobook. Probably one of the most difficult experiences of my entire life. It's a dark room. I had to sit there for two hours, like nine hours a day. Reading this Wait, book. Wait, two hours, nine hours a sorry, day? Sorry, two days, nine, nine hours. hours. Okay, 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 Sorry, it's really That's early okay. still. Um, it's 9 a.m., people. It's so it's single, single digits still, people. Um, but then you sit there, and because I'm Canadian, a lot of my pronunciation is a little different. Oh, yeah, it's a little so weird. So then every two seconds... <laughs> 
<laughs> it's a little free healthcare. My producer's like, can you say that again like this? <laughs> or your that sentence made no sense. And they just <laughs> constantly would stop me and I was like, damn. Dang. There's actually in my audiobook, no lie, I can't pronounce a word. And so I'm like, Which one? I don't remember. I like, thought you had the book. Was, I honestly think it was contribute because I say contribute and I think Americans say contribute. Oh yeah, contribute. I say contribute. Contribute? Yeah. That so anyways, contribute. I kept contribute. messing it up and I was like, contribute. You know what I'm saying. It's my audiobook. It's in the recording. <laughs> my yeah. voice on the page, y'all. I honestly wish that I would have recorded the whole thing, but I just I didn't make the time in my schedule and now mm -hmm. I'm regretting it because everybody I talk to that has a New York Times bestseller has recorded their really? full audio. So wow. do maybe that, that was do you think that means something? Maybe it does. Maybe I should just go back now. So now you are a model. Am I? Yes. I mean, <laughs> and that's a little intimidating sitting next to you <laughs> calling me a model. Well, come on. I mean, at, at this point in the game, you've probably done enough modeling that when you showed up on the Olay um, set, mm -hmm. it just felt natural. I've gotten a little better at it. The first couple times I was on set, definitely didn't know how to leave. You're like, what, what do I do with my hands? What right. do I do with anything? The hands is the biggest thing. Mm -hmm. And I have to say to people all the time, you just shake out the hand and then you just rest it. That's the, wow. it looks like it hurts though. So you just shake point. it and then you rest it. See? Wow. But this hand, Pro tips with Ashley Graham, y'all. But this hand, the my finger always points out for some reason. It must be like a tendon is tight or something. So I have to, and then pull it in. So just look at your hands. You're so self-aware. <laughs> you have to be when you're a model. You're being freaking analyzed at all times of the day. Wow. Um, but I want to talk about the Olay mm -hmm. campaign and what, what was the concept behind it? So first of all, I got to say, I love working with Olay. And I'm not just saying that because I have a partnership with them. Or because they Gen paid you? No, I, I mean, they did, but that's not why I'm saying this. I mean, to be real talk, hey, I'm a look. super candid person. They called me up the first time we ever had a call. And they said, we have this product. It's called Olay Whip. It's supposed to be a sunscreen. And I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. Let me stop you right there. Because I don't know if you've experienced this. Colored people in sunscreen is not the best combination. It, when I was younger, my mom would force me to wear sunscreen when okay. we went to amusement parks. And it would turn me purple. I always oh. remember this. It would turn me purple. I would be a greaseball. And so I don't have a good relationship with sunscreen. Do you sunscreen. wear sunscreen? So I never did. I'm openly saying I never wore sunscreen. I'm that person. You heard it here first. Yes, I never did. And then Ole called me and I was like, is this actually going to be a thing though? Like, because I think it might work for lighter people, but is it going to work on my skin? And they're like, let us just send it to you. Super skeptical. I tried it and I was like, yo, God damn, this actually does work. I wear it every day. You Legit wear sunscreen now. Legitimately, I wear sunscreen every day. Because Wait, what's your beauty regimen now? <laughs> I'm like, only sunscreen. It's just a sunscreen. And it ends with sunscreen. <laughs> <laughs> my beauty regimen is simple. I try to wash my face and not fall asleep with makeup after a long day. And then I try to drink two glasses of water. You only drink two glasses. Uh, if of I drink two glasses of water, it's a good day. Wow. Yeah, it's I'm not wow. great at drinking water. Wow. Okay. All right. Yeah. Well, you're gorgeous otherwise. Oh, you're so sweet. But uh, yes, that's 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 how the Olay campaign started off. Once then, I knew they weren't BSing, I was like, I would like to work with you. And what's the tagline behind it? It's face anything. Face anything. So we're anything. fearless like that. We can face anything. And I also saw a video online where you said, like, I'm not too much of anything. Yes, exactly. So super cool. There's a campaign right now on Times in Times Square. Hey, no big deal. I oh know my, my billboard is next to Beyonce behind like beside BJZ and Beyonce. So it's a big deal. Um, Wait, and also you're in the issue, the September yes, issue, Beyonce's. Yes, yes, yes. I am. Wow. I'm in it also. I've got a David Yerman campaign. Look at me, in there. I'm such a jerk. I just went straight to my page and didn't even look at it. <laughs> I didn't look at yours. Yeah, yeah. I'm just I, kidding. That's true. I did. <laughs> She's like, I did to prep for this podcast, but otherwise. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know when your abs hurt and you laugh so loud? That feels Am so I doing good. That? Oh, great. Yes, thank you, Lily. Um, it's yeah, it's about how people call women too anything, anything. like too outspoken, too bold, too fat, too ambitious, too, too pretty whatever. big deal, yeah, exactly. too. Exactly, everything. And so it's kind of about, like no, we're not to anything. We're just mm -hmm. the right amount. Stop trying to confine mm -hmm. us and try, stop trying to put us in a box and telling us to be a certain amount of whatever. Right. So I like cool. that. Yeah. I like that. That's exactly what young girls need to hear. Mm -hmm. So now in society, I think in America, we're seeing women of Indian descent, mm -hmm. you, Priyanka, mm -hmm. Mindy, mm -hmm. um, Padma. But growing up, did you see Indian women around? Did I mean, you see women that looked like you besides your family? In Bollywood movies, obviously, right. I grew up with Bollywood movies, but in Western culture, definitely not. It's, you know, it's interesting, and this is where I'm gonna, I hope it's okay if I get super candid, but it's well. so good that we're so, we, we prioritize diversity so much, and I think that's really great. Diversity is amazing, but in some ways, it's also almost made my life a little harder, if I'm being honest, because 
I also feel like diversity has turned into a checklist people mm. need for certain projects. And mm. so I'm going to be completely honest. Sometimes I get gigs because it's like, hey, we need a we need a we colored need person Indian to be girl. in this. But for someone who auditions. The oh, token. you're saying sometimes you're the only woman of color on no, set? No, I'm saying sometimes if there's one woman of color, there's not room for another woman of color. Mm. Got because it. It, this idea of like, we need this to be diverse. Oh, you're here? It's diverse now. And, and the perfect example is auditioning. You mm -hmm. know, if I audition for a role, prior to everyone talking about diversity it was like hey we want someone to do this role great everyone come in right and now that diversity is such a thing which is great i'm gonna preface with is great but now they'll be like we need this role to be a brown person right and once that brown person's fulfilled is none of the other roles are gonna be a brown person play. especially you know me the names you mentioned those are the names i always think of i'm like if i go into an audition and brianca auditioned for this have you seen Brianna yeah, Trump? Like, there's no way I'm gonna get this. Right, you but know you're what I mean? also different, and it's like, why couldn't you all be in the same exactly. film together? That that does suck because I do feel like when I'm on set, I'm the only big girl, mm -hmm. and if there are other big girls, we're all naked because I, they have you know, to make a statement. And I get it. It's like everyone's trying their best. They're trying to be inclusive. Kudos to that. We're going in the right direction. But specifically in terms of auditioning, I've just noticed where it's like. If there's a brown girl already part of this cast, there's no way I'm gonna get this. Yeah, so, you know. Wait, but you were just in Fahrenheit 451. I was. It was a small cameo in it, but I was in it. Okay. I'm very grateful. Um, were there any other Indian people in it? No, Michael B. Jordan was the lead. Yep. Um, was there any other Indian people? Mm, there weren't that many main characters to begin with, but there were no other Indian okay. people. Okay, but there was a, a very diverse yeah. cast. Mm -hmm. um, I haven't seen it, I'm so That's sorry, okay. but okay. I also heard how incredible it was. Did, Did you? you have a lot of fun filming it? I, okay, here's, here, I, yes and no. Okay. <laughs> yes, because Michael B. Jordan and Mike Shannon are amazing. Okay. I mean, getting to watch Mike Shannon act, he, he came up to me one day and he complimented me and I freaked out. Really? Because he's so stoic and he's very in role and he's in his character and no one really like talks too much to Mike Shannon because he's in his own. And he came up to me one day and he said, you know, I just want to let you know that you're being a real trooper on set and you're being a real professional. And I'm like, oh. And he complimented me and just walked away. And it was the greatest experience on that set. Michael that's B. Jordan. The best ex that's oh, the 100%. best compliment you can it's get. It's because, of, and this goes back to why it was a little difficult. So my character completely changed oh. from what I auditioned from. Oh. She, I guess. What was the be, audition? The audition was super loud, super outspoken, super funky. Even the way she dressed was super funky. Hello, you. Yeah, pretty much me. Pretty much me. And then the director was like, and he, and he admitted it. He said, it doesn't match everything else I've shot for this movie. So she completely did a 180 and got very stoic and very serious. And so I had to do wardrobe twice. I had to like change all my lines, learn all my lines twice. And so it was a very difficult experience. And I think Mike picked up on that and that's why he came and complimented me. So you were prepping to be yourself and then now here you are on set and you have to be a whole other person. Yes. Was that difficult? It was super difficult and super intimidating because Again, next to Mike Shannon, a lot of my scenes are with Mike Shannon, and I'm already nervous trying to, you know, <laughs> be as awesome as he is. And so it was, not to mention it was all night shoots in the cold. Are you going to get into acting? Yes, I do want to get more into acting. I do try, I try my best to audition. Um, I'm also into writing and directing and producing as well. So I, a few months ago, I started my own production company. Ah! Which I'm hoping, thank you, which I'm hoping kind of lets me take the reins a little bit because I come from a world that's so create yourself and the rules are a little different. Mm -hmm. When I do have to go into an audition and, and go through that very archaic traditional process, I find it super frustrating. Yeah. I did just do an NBC pilot, which okay. I loved. It didn't get greenlit. It's okay. I loved it. Don't you hate doing pilots and they don't get picked but up? But that's what I'm saying. Yeah. I loved it. I had a great experience, but I'm like, let me get this straight. You're going to spend all this money, take mm -hmm. all this time for something that may or may not happen. That, let's be real, some old guy's gonna make the decision about. Yep. It's like a super frustrating process. You can process. say it, an old white man. An old white man, there it is, <laughs> gonna make the decision about. It's true life. It is. And I come from a world where I get You're millions the, of views, and yes. it's because I know what I'm talking about. Yes. I know what my audience wants to watch. I'm in tune right. with my audience. So, you know, when you have a show that you really believe in, and then some dude's like, nah, I don't think kids wanna watch this, it's like, how I the know. hell do you know? Right? <laughs> you know right. what I mean? So, I, I, I started my own production company in hopes that I could take the reins a little bit. And I have so. to say, as a businesswoman, the one thing that I have learned and, and I still have to remind myself is nobody's going to do it except you. Mm -hmm. And have you had to learn that the hard way or have you just always taken the bull by the horns? I think a combination of both. I've always been that person, you know, growing up, I was always like, I want to do this my way or like, yeah. I know I can do this myself. But I think my life has, the stars have super aligned of everything I've done. Before I did YouTube, I was a dance captain. 
Oh, I was a yeah, I was a captain me? of a co-ed Bhangra team. Hello? I'm a Bhangra I'm a Bhangra dancer, no big deal. But that experience, I, you know, and, and that was me being like, I'm gonna turn this into a business and we're gonna be the biggest dance company in the world. And all my dancers <laughs> are like, chill out, bro. This is like a side gig. And but I always get carried away with things like that. And I think the thing I learned from that experience was I'm just imagining you dance. Oh, that's no. why I just kind of like went into like the And that's why she like, laughed. She's like, I imagine you dance, and then I laughed. <laughs> <laughs> but that experience taught me that. You can't force 20 people to care about something, mm. but you can control yourself caring about something. Mm. And so I super care about what I do, mm -hmm. and I hope it shows in everything. And that's I do. why she's got a production company, people. Yes. Are you going to do some rom coms? Uh, I want to do all the things. Right now, what we're focusing on is comedy, horror, because I think comedy and horror are very similar. Yep. Uh, animation, and a little bit of reality. That's nice. Mm -hmm. Nice. Rom coms are having this like resurgence now. Did they ever die though? I mean, I don't know. Not like, in Meg my Ryan, life. where are you? <laughs> where are you in your orgasm? I feel like, you know what has really stepped up? Horror. I really? feel like in television and movies, like just horror has really stepped okay, up. Okay, do you watch Black Mirror? I do watch Black Mirror. I, I binge watched it. What else do you watch? Um, oh, The Sinner was good. I just watched The Sinner Holy as well. Holy So good. That was such a good comeback So good. I love American Horror Story yes, as well. Yes, yes. Um, even like with the movies that have come out, like Hereditary and just like all the things I haven't seen doing, Hereditary. It's just, it's evolving so much and I really dig it. So we're going to see Lily Singh doing some. I want to die or kill people, yeah. <laughs> okay, I want to talk about Ecuador. Do it. I mean, first of all, your Insta stories are freaking bonkers thanks i try really hard i mean seriously <laughs> first of all you have so much energy all the time and you're like what's up yeah! i ate maggots <laughs> but i didn't eat maggots okay first of all what happened what happened with the maggots okay so first of all we're saying i can't i can't stress enough how in the middle of the amazon jungle we are yeah we're the main method. how did you get there it, oh it was a trek girl okay bring so, us bring us okay, there okay okay we're in la okay we fly to San Salvador. Okay. That's our stopover. Then we fly to Quito. How long was the flight to El, so it's El Salvador? Like, um, wait, am I even saying? Was that what we did, Kyle? San Salvador was our stopover first? San Great. Salvador. Great. It was three. So it was like, th what was the first flight? Five hours? <laughs> Come on, Kyle. Uh, four. Four and then. Something like that, yeah. Yeah, cool. So the first flight to San Salvador is like four or five hours. Okay. And you have a stop over there, which is super short. Oh, so no. So this, the only way to get there is with these super tight connections with like, your stop over is 20 minutes. Well, you may or may not get your luggage. Like, truly. So then from and San Salvador. And you checked your bag. Of, co of course. I'm in the oh, jungle, girl. So then bags. we go to Ecuador. That's, that's two flights now. We land in Ecuador. We spend the night. The next morning, we take a small plane to Coca. So okay. that's the third flight. And then once you land, the only way to get to the lodge is a two-hour canoe ride. No. What? Yes. The With main, all your bags? Mm -hmm. no. The main method of transportation is the Napo River via canoe. So it takes a very long time to get there. It takes a long there. time to get there. So You're you better have coffee. A hundred percent. Well, they have something called Wayusa there. What which is, is like that? these leaves that they brew and it's supposed to be, supposed to be like stronger than tear coffee. Did you try it? Yeah. It was what did it do dope. to you? It's just like an energy drink, a natural oh. energy drink. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's not like going to get you high. Like, no, 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 no. Like that, you like that like drug that everyone... Like Yes. No, 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 no. Have you done that? No. Okay. I'm too scared to do <laughs> things like that. I'm like, I like to be in control. There's these maggots that have been in this tequila for... And I'm not... I, I know what you're thinking when you say maggots. You're thinking of these cute little small ones in LA. No, no. no they these were... were Amazon jungle Ugh. fat maggots. They were okay. juicy. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. They were wet. Yeah. Oh. And so when my DP, my uh, videographer, he's like, yeah, I'll eat one. And so how you eat how it, and it's you, on my no. vlog. How do you volunteer no. for this? Because they were like, who's going to eat this? And he's like, I have testosterone. Let me do this. No, he's super sweet. But how you eat it is first you have to bite the head off. No. Then you have to suck the insides out. Oh, suck it. And so the string of guts are basically down his chin at this point. And I'm like, Bleh. I'm like puking while I vlog this. And then you eat the rest of the body. And you have to chew it. And he did it like a champ. No, he like actually, a he swallowed. champ, yeah. He's a swallower. <laughs> <laughs> if you watch the vlog, like you see yeah. the guts of yeah, the maggot all over him. It's, it's a whole thing. It's like on another level. He's so cool. So you didn't go to Ecuador to eat maggots. I did not. <laughs> I went with We Charity, um, who's an organization I work with all the time. I adore them. I love them. And every year for my birthday, I do a campaign where I sell Rafikis, like this one, and oh, a necklace. Nice. It's Girl Love, which is my campaign and we charity combining. And the proceeds go towards helping girls' education. So the cool thing is, in my past two birthdays, the proceeds have gone to girls in Kenya, and this year they're going to girls in Kenya, Ecuador, and India, which is why I went to Ecuador. So I could see firsthand 
exactly where they go. What's up with Ecuador? So in Ecuador, I mean, their circumstances environmentally are very challenging, whether okay. it's flooding or whether it's you know super, super hot right. or they don't have access to clean water. And so there's a lot of challenges when it comes to schools. Also like access to schools. Sometimes and it's like a 45 minute canoe ride. That you 45 have to, minute yeah. canoe ride just yeah. to get to school. Mm -hmm. What made you go to Ecuador? Like you just had a heart for it or? Well, I'm a really big believer of if I'm going to support a campaign, I need to see how the money is handled firsthand. Okay. And so my previous two birthday campaigns, like I mentioned, were in Kenya. Yep. Been to Kenya twice. I consider it like a third home. Aww. I know the girls there. I've seen the schools. I know the programs. But I wanted to expand the yeah. impact. And so visiting Ecuador, I, I'm able to just answer questions more knowledgeably about yeah. where that money goes. And India, I'm, I'm kind of innately familiar with as well. And so I just want to be prepped to know what exactly I'm working on. Uh, that's you know? noble of you. So you've got we mm -hmm. and you went to Ecuador mm -hmm. and you're also a UNICEF ambassador yes, and right. you have safe to learn. Mm -hmm. And how did that all begin? So I've been a UNICEF Global Goodwill Ambassador for a year or two now. Okay. And we're trying to figure out the best way for us to work together because okay. I love storytelling. I have a young audience. They try to connect with young people. So we're trying to marry those two things. I went to South Africa with them recently and did one of their first ever youth talks, which is basically just sitting with a group of youth and being like, right. hey, instead of a bunch of adults telling you what you need and telling you what your problems are, why don't you tell me right. what your problems are? And that's mm -hmm. such an important part of the conversation because mm -hmm. so often kids mm -hmm. are like, yo, all these adults are making decisions for us. Mm -hmm. They don't know what they're talking about. Mm -hmm. And if you're going to make decisions about kids, kids should be at the table. And so I learned just all these issues that the youth in South Africa deal with. And we're hoping to do youth talks around the world. I love that. Yeah, just to learn about what the issues are so that we can take that information, organize, and try to make some real change in terms of policies and government. This is exactly what kids need. They need to hear from people who are a little bit older than them mm -hmm. that have been through similar situations that are in a very similar um, generation that are like, mm -hmm. they understand social media, they understand the hate, mm -hmm. they understand someone who uh, can speak freely with them about government. So I think this is great. Or that also doing just this. like, because admittedly, a lot of the issues I hear about are things I also cannot relate to. You know, I can't relate to getting abused by a teacher in a classroom mm -hmm. as frequently as some of the youth around the world do mm. you know if i ever hear about that it's like through the grapevine this happened and i see it on the news but these kids are like no in my class it happens all the time what do you wow. say to those kids i mean it's it's a lot of weight you know yeah. i think it's important to just listen i yeah. don't try to say much because i don't have a viewpoint that can offer anything because i'm not in their circumstance and i don't want to pretend like i am in their circumstance you just are the big sister yes so i listen and then i think about you know when when it was all said and done and all the youth leave i sit with unicef and i think well, what can we do mm -hmm. to, in a real way, to implement some of these changes? Mm -hmm. Call to action. Mm -hmm. Talking about social media, mm -hmm. I want to talk about the haters. The and, haters. And hey, hey, haters, we hear you're not. <laughs> I feel like in interviews, I'm always getting asked, what do you do about the haters? Like, how do you handle them? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, you just handle them. Mm -hmm. Because now I feel like I've got this shield on where like you can shoot me and like nothing's gonna penetrate. Yeah. But for all the people out there that it does penetrate and it does hurt, how, how do you handle that? And what do you tell your audience? Well, let me start by saying that I've been doing internet content for eight, nine years now. Right. And I have a really thick skin. Having said that, the right hate comment can still penetrate me. And so wow. if you're feeling impacted, don't think something is wrong with you. The right crafted hate comment can definitely bug you. Even yeah. me. Sometimes I'm like, I'm invincible. I got so many things going on. Someone will say something. I'm like, oh, <laughs> I hear you. my self-esteem. What so, is it usually that like hits you? It's not, is it not, is it looks? Is it I your intelligence? Is I think, it, first of all, if it's anything to do with my family and friends. I've had some, <laughs> you know, I was really close to my grandfather and he was in a lot of my videos and then he passed away. Oh. And sometimes every once in a while, an evil person will make a comment about it. Like oh what? Yeah, just being like, this just is so ridiculous. Your grandfather wouldn't be proud of you. And they'll say stuff like that. And that really no. like, I could kill someone in that moment. But what I've okay. learned is two things. One is, this is where the psychology degree comes in a little bit. Hello. Is, <laughs> Do you wake up and write mean things on people, stuff on the internet? No, because you're a happy person. Mm -hmm. I'm going to assume your right. answer was no. Um, um, it is no. Okay, great. And I feel like well-adjusted, happy people don't do that. Right. You know, they don't wake up and be like, I'm going to write something mean about someone on the internet. They right. don't because they're busy. They're busy doing things. Yeah. And I feel like someone who does write negative things, they're really telling their story, not yours. Mm -hmm. They're telling a story about, I'm not happy where I am. I need to have an outlet for my hate and my anger somewhere, and so I'm choosing you. The second thing is, and this is just a practical tactic, aside from all that like fairy tale BS I just said. 
I told you this before we started as well. Yeah. If I see a hate comment, because I'm not going to lie, I'm a pretty witty person, and I can be sassy. If I see a hate comment, I will type up a savage response. Oh. Like, savage. I'm talking like, I will end you. And then I'll delete it. And I, <laughs> and, I, and I won't send it. And I won't send it, because it actually accomplishes the same relief. Right. I wrote oh. it. I know how smart I am. I'm like, oh. That's really smart. And then I delete it. That's how I forgive people. Mm -hmm. Like if I really need to forgive someone, I write them a letter. I don't send it, mm -hmm. but it's like that weight that's lifted it off of your you shoulders. Think that those things are mostly for yeah. you. I have to say, I totally agree about if you're coming and waking up and you're putting mm -hmm. comments of negativity. Mm -hmm. There was a girl who wrote something on one of my, on, uh, I had done something for Women's Equality Day. Mm -hmm. And she goes, so much to hate on there. I write. And she <laughs> came on, she's like, how dare you talk about women equality? You you and all the women in this photo were probably oh. bullies growing up. You probably bullied women I like, saw that. White, like me. Me, I was right? so upset. So I was actually feeling for her that day. She caught me in a good mood. Mm -hmm. And I said, whatever her name was, I love you. Mm -hmm. I'm so sorry that you feel this way. Um, you know, and, and I said something that was very uplifting. And mm -hmm. I said, I hope that you were able to express your thoughts and mm -hmm. feelings on my page. But just know... Um, forgiveness and mm. letting go are the two biggest things that I had to learn about. Mm -hmm. And that's how you can get past this. She wrote back, thank you so much for allowing me to come on and release my hate on your mm -hmm. page. I feel better now. Right. And it's like, you though it's like you can't, you don't get a therapist. You come on someone else's mm -hmm. page and you write hate. I think that if more people were able to express how they don't hate this, this mm -hmm. is just a feeling and a concern they have or whatever, or maybe it's a past emotion mm -hmm. and they can say, this is how I did feel, Instagram would be a different place. Oh, 100%. I mean, that's never going to happen, unfortunately. Of course it's not, but we can but talk about it. 100%. We can talk about our hopes. I've, every time I've ever caved and have responded, I was thinking about making a video about this, actually following the journey of responding to haters. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say 99.9, .9, and this is not just me saying this to prove, like literally statistically, I think 99.9% .9 of the time, the response I get is, oh my God, Lily, I was just kidding. I love you so much. Right. <laughs> I'm, I'm telling you, or it's like a, they delete their comment. You know, it's, they don't actually mean what mm -mm. they're saying. It is a hundred percent about them and how, what they are dealing with. In and their they life. just need some attention. hundred percent. It's just like when you go into that, uh, you watch that uh, show catfish on MTV mm -hmm. and then they're like, I just wanted love. You Beeping. know what would be so good? fake Instagram accounts meant for people to go and put hate comments on just to get, no, I think that there are, are like robot accounts that go and like, say like fa just the word fat. No, but I'm saying the opposite. I'm saying there should be accounts designated for people to go and release their emotions oh. towards them. So say all your hate comments to these fake accounts that are not real people. So this is their platform. No, yes. but they like to do it to celebrities. Well, stop being so fabulous. <laughs> what the hell do you want me to say? <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys, we want to hear from you. We want to hear about your love and how you're handling all the hate on your Instagram because Lily and I have got it covered, but not every <laughs> single day. So give us your thoughts and comments at Anchor App, also on Twitter and Instagram. Pretty big deal. We are here with Lily Sang. Me. Sang. Boom, boom, also. boom, boom, boom. Okay, so every episode for Pretty Big Deal, we are honoring someone or an initiative that's changing the world around them or changing the world that we live in. And today we want to honor Steph Curry. So Yay. he, yes, first of all, hi, Steph Curry. First of all, best <laughs> of Steph Curry. <laughs> <laughs> no disrespect, Aisha, but hi, Steph. Hi, boy. <laughs> we could go on a double date. Um, so he wrote an op-ed in the Players' Tribune um, for Women's Equality Day, and he had to say this, which I thought was mm -hmm. so inspirational. Mm -hmm. He said, I want our girls to grow up knowing that there is no boundaries that can be placed on their futures, period. I want them to grow up believing that they can dream big and strive for careers where they are treated fairly and paid equally. Preach, Steph! Shouldn't that just be the expectation at this point? But it's not. Yeah, a lot of things should be common sense. Common sense is not common. That's yeah. what I've learned. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but it's great to have allies and, you know, in, in men who don't know the struggles firsthand but can still put themselves in women's shoes and be not the advocate or spokesperson, but just be an ally. Yeah, and yeah. I, I have to say, when, when I read the whole article, he talked about how, you know, he was honest, like mm. now having daughters. Of course, right? ain't that how it goes. It, it's, <laughs> it's how it goes, like, but now he really realizes mm. that women don't have equal pay. Mm -hmm. We don't have the same um, opportunity. And here he is standing up and, and making it very obvious that, that he does stand with us. So thank you, Steph Curry. Thank you. Mwah, we love you. And a you're real one. a pretty big deal today. A real one. 
one. Um, all right, I want to I want to do a little rapid fire with okay, you. Okay, let's do it. You like a rapid fire? Love it. I feel like these are pretty fun. All right, so I'm gonna say pretty You're big. Fun. You're so funny. I like you're you. so pretty. You I keep looking at I you. I like, like you. She's so pretty. I feel a good energy. I feel a good energy. <sighs> Thank you. So do you. Mm. Okay, I'm gonna say pretty big, and you're gonna, and I'm gonna say a word, and mm -hmm. you can just whatever you feel. Okay, I kind of get it, but we'll see. We'll just, yeah, <laughs> we'll just throw you into <laughs> the deep end. Okay. Here you go. Here's some floaters. Okay, <laughs> pretty big hero. Dwayne Johnson. Okay. Oh, I love him. Love him. He's pretty hot. <laughs> um, pretty big character. Me. Okay, yes. I like that. Mm -hmm. Pretty big destination. India. Oh, I really want to go there, by the way. And I feel like I need to go there with a friend. So maybe we can talk about that. We'll Pretty big junk Lily. food. An entire frozen pizza. Oh, I love mm. frozen pizza. Eat it all the time. My husband's judging me right now. Eat it yeah. all the time. In my judgment face. In between my too. two glasses of water. <laughs> 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 Pretty big lyric flow. Ooh, Kendrick Lamar. Oh, do you have, do you have a favorite lyric? Well, you know what? I just did a parody. I know! I saw it! I see it! Yeah. Where I... Because he has a song called DNA where yeah. I'm like, if Kendrick Lamar were your biology teacher, yes. so instead of his DNA song, goes, I got, I got, I got, I got molecules, got all the tools inside my DNA, <laughs> got a sugar group, got double loops inside my DNA. So <laughs> yeah. it's like me teaching biology using Kendrick's lyrics. So through mimicking his flow, I was like, damn, he's really good. <laughs> you are a witty son of a... All right. Pretty big recommendation. Anything. Ashley Graham. Oh, pretty big motto. Your past does not define you. It is part of who you become. Oh, yes. Preach, Lily. Preach. All right, what's going on? What's next for you? Uh, a lot of things are next. Well, right now, in this month of September, definitely my birthday campaign. Can I do a little self-plug? Is that fine? No, this is okay. your moment. It's my birthday campaign, so girllove.com will be selling these Rafikis and necklaces. All the proceeds, none of them go in my pocket. They all go towards girls' education. Wow. So I'll be putting all of my promotional power behind that campaign. My production company, like I said, I want to tell real good stories yes. with real people of the world. Yes. I don't care how many colored people in the video. I don't care how many people of different sexual orientations or religious beliefs. Mm -hmm. and I just want to tell good stories mm -hmm. that are reflections of the real world. So, and then I just want to, I want to stay happy. Aww. That's the real thing. It's like when you're in this industry and you're so tired and you're getting pulled in every direction, you're like at the end of the day, you're not having fun and you're not happy. Does it even matter? Seriously. Does it even matter? And I know that sounds kind of fairy tale-ish, but as someone who's just been, I'm sure you can relate, who's been exhausted, mm -hmm. there's been days where I've, won an award, had a billboard up, met my idol, and I've gone home and haven't even been able to process it because I'm mm -hmm. like, gotta do something else now. <laughs> exactly, because you know you're I mean? always on to the next thing. So it's like, my main thing to focus on is being present and making sure I'm actually enjoying the journey. That's a big thing. And not just thing. mindlessly on the journey. I have to say, if I don't wake up with gratitude in the mm -hmm. morning or go to bed with it, my next day is affected. Gratitude. Yeah. Recipe to it's success. It's a big, big deal. For success and happiness. Thank you, Lily. For Thank being you on for here. having me. I really appreciate it. And to it. the whole crew that's so awesome that y'all can't see behind the scenes. And don't forget to go onto Instagram and Twitter and talk to us at Pretty Big Deal. Also, there's that Anchor app where you can leave me a little voice memo. Talk to me, sing to me. Let me know how you feel about me. Yes, I am. My I'm toes just tingled. <laughs> um, all right. I'm Ashley Graham. Remember, you are bold. You are brilliant. You are beautiful. And you rock. Love you guys. <laughs> <laughs>